Okay guys, working on a 2013 Volkswagen Passat with a TDI engine. I believe this is a 2 liter turbo TDI. Um, customer complaint is a check engine light. So let me take you to the scan tool, see what kind of trouble codes we have. Okay guys, a couple of trouble codes we have. P220A. Knock sensor supply voltage bank one sensor one. Uh, P2200 knock sensor bank one sensor one circuit. Um, function restriction due to implausible message. Function restriction due to receive mechanical malfunction value, mechanical failure. I'm not sure what that is. Um, the P2200 again. 2209 knock sensor heater sense make one sensor one circuit range performance u1006 knock sensor bank one no communication and p048c exhaust pressure control valve position uh, that's probably a seized control valve I'm um, just going to focus on these knock sensor faults Okay, so just going to stay low right now and uh, just take a visual inspection on this knock sensor. Supply voltage, maybe take some voltage measurements, see what we have. I know that the knock sensor is its own module. So basically what the knock sensor does is tells the ECM how much NOx it detects in the exhaust and based on that input to the ECM, the ECM adjusts the SCR injector or the AdBlue injector and it adjusts the amount of AdBlue that is injected into the exhaust and what it does is the urea or AdBlue that is injected turns the NOx nitrous oxides into nitrogen and water so what we're going to do is just take a visual inspection first and go from there I said the vehicle running so the battery doesn't die uh, it might be leaving the key on while it's in the air what you have to do is take this shield down there's a couple 10 plastic 10 millimeters and uh, get you a shot of this knock sensor so this is the knock sensor right here and this harness comes all the way down and goes underneath this shield and then right in there is the knock sensor module so that's what we're going to be doing some voltage checks uh, let me get this shield down All right, so I have my wiring diagram. Um, and I just did a couple drawings on it. This right here is our knock sensor. This is a five pin connector. So pin one, blue and red. And follow that up. It goes up and I already drew it. It goes to fuse SB4. So that is the power supply. Pin two and five looks like they go to ground pins three and four they are the cam wires looks like pin three is the low can pin four is the high uh, these first checks I'm going to do we had a fault for the supply voltage so I'm going to go on this pin one the blue and red wire and take a voltage measurement see what we have there So here's our knock sensor module. This side goes to the actual sensor. Um, there's no way to really access those pins unless you're piercing wires. Um, the checks I want to do are on this side. So right here is our blue with red. That's our power supply. Um, there's a couple browns and then there's some can wires. Uh, I want to check 
the power supply here and check the grounds. And what we should have on this wire is 12 volts. Um, it's kind of hard to do this, so I'm just going to keep you guys focused on the voltmeter. But we do got. Well, we had our voltage on there. Simply jumping around here. My pin is definitely in there. Two volts, three volts, that could be our problem right there. Let me move this over, check this ground. 0 0.01, I'm okay with that. It's kind of hard to find a good ground under here. Let's go back to this power supply wire. Red and blue. Then 10, 9, that always just jumped around. We definitely got some voltage fluctuation there. So there is, I think, a bulletin or a TSB or a recall, whatever you want to call it, on these connectors, on this little harness to replace this, this harness due to corrosion getting inside the wires. This one looks like it was already done. I guess that really doesn't mean anything. So I'm gonna try to, try to hook my meter up here so I can just start wiggling this harness, see if we can get some voltage fluctuations there, you know, wiggle test. Try to keep this simple. Let me keep this. It's definitely in there. I'm gonna switch this pin. Be careful not to let that touch anything. So, got that in there, let me get you focused on the meter. Okay, so while you're focused on that, I'm just gonna connect my leads up. And just wiggle this harness around. So we can get a change in this voltage. All right, so I'm definitely connected there. I'm just gonna move this around where this tape is. I'm definitely getting some changes there. I just got my hand up near the connector. I wonder if there's an issue in this harness. You guys. Try to get the meter and what I'm doing in the shot. I don't know if you can see the meter right there. And I'm just moving this harness around. I wonder if I'm just moving my pen. It's not making contact. gonna pull this out. Okay, I found our problem. The green death. And it is on that pin one, which our supply voltage. So that green pin is our supply voltage. It's our blue with red. I don't know if that helps. 
It's definitely green. And most likely has entered into that control module. Kind of hard to see. I can't get a better angle with this camera, but that pin's a little green in there. So what this car is going to get is uh, a repin on this connector and possibly a module. Let's see if I can get a better look inside there. I don't know if you guys can see that. There's definitely some green crusties on. It looks like obviously our pin one, pin four, maybe pin five, and uh, especially around pin one, it definitely looks like it's entered into, you know, maybe onto the board. It's kind of hard to tell. Um, this car is going to get a repin on this connector. Again, it was already done and it's going to get a module too. So a voltage supply issue to our NOx module, our NOx sensor module. Um, the module is the sensor. Not too bad. Don't forget, check your basics. So, first common rail on the channel, um, not too bad. So real quick, hold this harness apart, rip that tape off, here's our supply wire, all green and corroded. So this is definitely a confirmed issue, we're going to fix this and replace the module, this is probably corrosion and rust all inside the module. So hope you guys enjoy this and thanks for watching. One last thing guys, we also had the uh, exhaust pressure control valve fault and what happens with these, these flaps in here seize up. So basically right here, it's kind of hard to see, there's a spring and what happens is these valves will, the flaps will seize up, it's just a return spring. So it should return to the open position. And I can't even move this one. Usually you can move them by hand. I can't even move this one. So that's what to check for. That's usually what goes bad on these. Ugh, I can't move this one. Usually you can, it's just a little return spring. So that's what to look for on that.